Hello everyone, the Fuzz is back! Uh, sure has been a long time. A lot of things have been going on. And one of the things you might notice is I'm actually in a new apartment. Uh, that's one of the reasons I haven't really been very active in the game or, or, in, or in ladder or anything. Other than Masters, of course. But with the upcoming Ivia Cup and mobile release, we're hoping to turn that around and get videos back in, you know, back in business. Hopefully. But anyway, so today we got two things. One is the Ivia Cup. Uh, Kamsian is at it again. Trying to bring us something interesting. So, just go over these real fast. I really like these Ivias because they give us a chance to see a different kind of meta. Basically, this is the few of us just deciding, hey, we want to try Spellweaver this way. And then we do it. So we'll have double elimination, which is cool because you can lose and still kind of have a chance to win. Now, the important parts... No more than three copies of a card. Now this is something I've been I've been wanting to see in Spellweaver for some time. Because this would diversify everyone's decks. And, you know, if a card like Cataclysm has got you down, if you only see three copies in a deck, it's a lot less bad because of it. But, you know, that's 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 dreaming big. But I do think this is very interesting since uh, it means you can't the deck you make can't be as focused as before since if you're running four copies in a 60 card deck if you take away the shrines let's say 20 whatever 19 that's only 40 or so playable cards one tenth of them can be one specific card so you could in theory make a deck of four sorry 10 four ofs but now you're gonna have to have at least 13 or 14 copies so that's cool now we have some bands as is traditional we got Jorel silencer trigon Harbinger, Horizon, and Cataclysm. I'm going to talk about those in a bit. But the other thing I want to talk about, in addition to the cup, which I'll be playing in and making videos for, and or streaming, depending on how I feel, uh, we have the, what are they called? The Great Balance Project or something like that. That has to do with the um, the upcoming release the, the developers have essentially asked the community, Hey guys, you know what? Actually, the way they worded this, and this was golden, we realize we may have made some mistakes in the past regarding changes. Hallelujah, right? <laughs> so now they basically asked a number of Masters players and some other active players to help them with game balance, which is great because this is something we've been wanting to do. And I always say the players are better at balancing than developers because players will always, well, hey, there's always more players than developers and they'll always find stuff that the developers didn't think of. That's just, that's just reality. So here I have a list of cards. Uh, some of them are on the ban list for Ivia and some I just added. These are some of the cards we could start looking at for changes. So let's start with the big ones. Trigon of the Pact. I think it's, at this point, pretty much common knowledge that this card is a little bit too good. It is way better than the other one, the Pandemonium of Darkness. The main problem with this idea is that gaining both aspects essentially allows good decks to run three colors in a two-aspect deck. What you do is you just play one order, for instance, and then you play a green-blue Trigon, and you can use almost any of the cards in any of the good aspects. So you can make a really strong Soldier Valor deck just using the best cards of the three aspects. And I don't really think that's very fair. I think you should have to choose. And if you want a three-aspect deck, you should have to use three aspects. That seems fair to me. And other than that, I think it's fine. The ability, give a creature plus one, plus one, that's fine. But what I want to see for Trigon is you play it, you choose one of the three aspects, and that's what you get. You do not get a double aspect. I think that's proven to be really, really, really strong. So while we're on the subject of Trigon, before we get to the other big one, let's bring up Pandemonium, uh, Trigon's... Uh, ugly brother, the one that nobody wants, even though, even though this card has actually been put into decks, I do think it is far too weak. It's only been put in as sort of a casual Darius extra train to get more draining going on. 
but obviously the first effect of deleting one of your levels and getting two of the same is way worse than even just choosing one of the three so for pandemonium i still want to see choose one of the three evil aspects and you get that that would be an improvement over get two of the same because the whole point of a card like this is to be able to add flexibility or colors but if you have to choose two of the same there is not really any benefit to using this and the second effect i think they could just make it cost four mana then it's basically a succubus without the body which is not very good not awful not awful but let's see it drop down a four mana and then the effect of choose one of the three now yes yeah, some someone might say well i'm just gonna build six evil aspects and drain six life go ahead knock yourself out if you're willing to do this you deserve to drain six life so if we do that i think we'll see pandemonium go to a real reasonably playable level we do the same thing with trigon choose one of the three don't get a double and then i think we'll have a fair a fair balance between good and evil here i think that's what we need moving on to the second big one I'm, st I'm seriously starting to think that New Horizons is the source of all of our problems, really. Anything not related to aggro can basically trace back to this card. That includes Cataclysm and Silencer. So, I'm going to make this proclamation. If we're going to make nerfs, changes, or balances, start with this card. Get rid of it, or whatever you gotta do, and then see how Silencer... And Cataclysm and other cards like that, see how they work. See if they still feel unfair. Because I'm thinking, if you get rid of Horizons, Silencer is suddenly less good. Because the reason Silencer feels so unfair is because if your opponent goes Horizon, Horizon on turn 2 and 3, he can play Silencer or on turn 5 when you only have 3 mana. And then it just feels completely helpless because you have to throw out your entire turn... And still, you haven't cleared Silencer. But if you have to play Silencer, you know, fairly on four aspects, four mana, your opponent, let's say if they only have two aspects, they'll have six mana. They will have a much better chance of dealing with it. So, let's see that happen first. Like, if you nerf Silencer, but not Horizons, I feel like you're not addressing the problem correctly. So, yeah, let's see this go away. Now, a point... Does that mean Power Surge is a problem? No, I don't think it is. And the simple reason is... If you want to see why Horizons is better than Power Surge, think of this. Player A has Horizons and a Shrine in his hand. He plays Horizons, go up a level, then play a Shrine, 4 mana, and then redraw. The result? He got a level and the mana, and he still has a card in hand. Player B has a Power Surge and a Shrine. He uses the Shrine for level and then the Power Surge to get mana. Result, he got a level and a mana, but does not have a card in hand. And that is the difference between the two. The difference is an extra card, which is a pretty big deal, it turns out. Yeah, you draw a card later when you have 7 mana, but ramping is most valuable early on. And that's when it doesn't draw a card. So, I think Power Surge is actually okay. And not likely to cause problems. And the second reason is Horizons lets you actually just get any color you want. Whereas Power Surge, you just get mana. So leave Power Surge alone. This, this is the criminal. Put him behind bars. Moving on. Catacomb Keeper. I think this is one of those cards that's the victim of Horizons. You know, playing this on four aspects and drawing like four cards. or No, you draw three cards and you discard one. It's pretty insane. But it'd be a lot less insane if Horizons didn't exist. So again, deal with Horizons first and then see if Catacomb Keeper feels unfair. Timea, we go to the other direction where a card like this uh, feels extremely overpowered in these kind of board control matches. Because not only are you getting you know permanent buffs, which possibly help you clear the board, you can also draw cards. Now it's actually less bad than i thought and that's partly because of flying creatures and things like the um dwarven mortar which is a great card to have in the game 
because it gives you a fast answer and because it sits in the back uh, it's not as vulnerable to attack and also hopefully more flying creatures which are very useful because they can't be attacked and killed so Taimea, I would put her on the watch list but it's entirely possible as long as we have some answers to boards that is not just Cataclysm then I think it can actually be okay. After after playing a few games with a Soldier Valor deck, I find that it's not as insane as I thought. Even though when Taimea hits, it's really insane. It's not like cr as crushing as you think. But three buffs like this are always dangerous because they can essentially become free removal, which is pretty powerful. In addition to the card draw and all that stuff. So Silencer, much like the Catacomb Keeper, I think is a victim of Horizons. Uh, before you do anything to it, let's hit Horizons first and then see how Silencer feels. It may still feel unfair, but it may not. Ultimately, the card isn't even that powerful. I think Vanguard showed us this in the last Masters, where he played three of these against the Ly Ly Lyrese's Zombies. And he still lost because Lyrese was ahead on the board and continued to apply a lot of pressure. And Silencer just wasn't doing anything. Because if you're behind, Silencer is useless. It's only when you have like 10 mana, then it becomes really insane. But without Horizons, it'll take a lot longer to get to four ma to, to get to 10 mana with four aspects. Cataclysm is basically in the same boat. By the way, uh, both Horizons and Trigon are banned in Ivia, thank God. And Silencer and Cataclysm also are, which maybe they don't have to be. Cataclysm, again, it's a victim of horizons because without horizons if you can't ramp uh, you, you you have to wait a long time to play cataclysm so it, it's a lot different because with horizons you, you you're ramping so you get the cataclysm faster and then you have more aspects and mana and then you can essentially afford to not play any early game without horizons i wonder if cataclysm would continue to be just as powerful it might actually turn out to be completely fine and it might be necessary for control decks to have some way to clean up a board. And, but at the same time, the aggressive decks have more time to beat up on the control decks. Now, I suppose you might try to power surge into this. But again, you're giving up a lot of cards by doing... Because you're basically paying a card by playing power surge. Whereas you necessarily aren't, you aren't necessarily with horizons. So it might end up being fair. I'm not even sure... But I want to see first, again, hit Horizons first, and only then Cataclysm. Scatter There's Bidding, so this is one of the cards that needs to be redesigned. It's a complete joke right now. It's kind of funny, but it's not playable in any realistic sense, because it doesn't give you any advantage. For a card that is four aspects, it just doesn't do anything. I mean, yeah, you get to play one of your opponent's cards, but then he can play one of your cards. What's the point of that? You know, it would be interesting if only you could play these cards. You know, you can, you know, that only you can play one of the cards that's under bidding, you know, ignoring the level requirements and not your opponent. That could be something. If not, then go for some kind of a engine. It could be re something related to mana because that's something that Dominion does. Where, let's say, the more mana you have, the more value you get. It could be something like. You know, for you know, summon a creature with stats equivalent to your mana crystals or something. Maybe a little bit scaled down because you know summoning a seven seven every turn could be a bit of a problem. Maybe you could summon like a seven seven illusion, right? That it dies as soon as it takes damage, something like that. I'm sure there's a lot of cool ideas with this, but as it is, bidding is basically a non-existent card. Covered pandemonium, harbinger is the last card banned in Ivia. I think we've seen just how insane this card is with Portal. Being able to play these for one mana and summoning like 15 creatures on the board for three mana is not very fair. And even in just the aggressive demons, it's completely ridiculous because you can have seven creatures by turn three and then you just beat your opponent. It's completely merciless. And I think the simplest solution to this card is just take away the demon tag. It's a fine card by itself. If you play it with the Tainted, you get two Spirits. That's pretty decent. You get a 2-4 and two Flying Blockers. That's completely reasonable. And it's actually one of the cool ways to use Tainted, where if you played without 
tainted. It's actually a little worse. Now, that being said, without the synergy with Portal and being able to search them, it is a lot worse. But I'd rather have a decent, maybe not great Harbinger than a completely overpowered card as it is, as the purple demons have shown us. So, yeah, I definitely don't want to see this card in Ivia. And then the last card is Azuris. I'm going to put her on the watch list of cards. She is pretty dangerous, but... At the same time, I don't think anyone would really say that she's completely busted. Interestingly, this is one of those cards that's actually not played with uh, Portal. Because you don't use blue. Not generally, anyways, when you play her. Though you could. But this is one of the cards that's actually played fairly. Now, the main reason it's so insane is because it triggers every time there's a decay. So, if you have Nightbringers on the board when you play her, you can just attack with them. And then just do all kinds of nastiness so I, i'm really glad she's legendary but yeah I, i'm gonna hold my judgment on her keep her in mind she may need a nerf she may not so again horizons first that's basically the moral of the story here horizons and trigon first and i guess pandemonium and only then <laughs> start looking at other cards Anyways, that's all I had to say. Uh, damn, my throat is sore after all this near, nearly screaming at the microphone. Anyways, uh, I'll see you around. I don't know when the first Ivia round is starting. Uh, when we have it up, I'll probably, I'll probably record it just like I did with the previous ones. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I'll have to start thinking about some decks. It's going to be good, like it always is. I'll catch you next time.